Hello, friends, and welcome to Talking with Finnish People. What makes a good live stream topic? Is it sex appeal? Is it intellectual rigor? Is it comedic potentiality? Is it resonance with the central truth of your loins? What makes a good topic for a live stream? Is it the wind on a wintry day whispering through the trees? Is it a lake on a summery day being wet on the ground? Is it a leaf on a falling tree in the autumn time? Nobody knows. Everybody will soon. The end. Is this a good topic? Apparently not. I have zero viewers. Zero thumbs. Now I have one viewer. One viewer. Hmm. Well, maybe this one viewer knows what makes a good topic. What makes a good topic, one viewer? Is it whether or not it matches with your clothing? That might be a metric one we could use, in theory. This is a poor topic because I'm wearing brown, for example. This is clearly not a brown topic. Might be something that someone might say hypothetically. Dark star. Hi, how about how to optimize your TE as an INFP? How to optimize your TE? Well, I have no idea. That's the truth. The truth. I don't know. I don't think you're meant to optimize your fourth slide. I think you're meant to delegate it. It'll optimize naturally in that context if delegated to a TE dominant. So dark star, you should marry an ESTJ right now, today, instantly. Find the first ESTJ you can find and marry that person. It doesn't even matter the gender. What gender are you, Dark Star? You've got 2K chromosomes. That makes you a lizard person? A lot. I had an ESTJ father. Don't think I can marry one female. Okay. Well, there are some less offensive ESTJs and more offensive ESTJs. You know. My friend Kunkel, I saw him earlier. He's pretty cool for ESTJ. You might like him. He's a good ESTJ. He won least annoying ESTJ award three years running, I believe. Joey Jo 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 Shabadi has an excellent topic idea. What should she get at Costco tomorrow? Um, where do you where does she do you ever get cold in the winter, Joey? She's in San Diego, I doubt it. Oh. Doesn't get that cold in there. Oh, okay. Unless you Shit. consider full of Mexicans cold. I don't know. If your feet get cold, Costco has really good wool socks, I remember. Or even if you just want comfy socks. I would suggest if they sell these things in bulk, these kind of bowls, get, <laughs> get like a gross of these. Get a gross of those things. That'd be helpful. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering what would be a good housewarming present. Yeah, they have pretty good quality clothes in general, as I understand it. You get the biggest package of toilet paper you can find. It makes that your only criterion. This has, however, the most number of rolls, okay? You look for one that tops a thousand rolls in one package. <coughs> you can find that, then that means something. You won't find out what till later. So after you've wiped your butt that many times.
I need to retape the nape of my neck. I need to remake the tape of my pecs. Here you go. Thanks. You should smoke that with your lungs. Uh, um, what makes something a good topic? Well, what makes a good conversation? Good question, philosophical Phil thinker. I'd say that I want to stress to everybody who might be concerned this is non-alcoholic beer. It needs to be retaped. I need to find another roll of electrical tape. But but where or where did I put the electrical tape? And once I take it out of my butthole, will you still want to wrap it around the pen? Where or oh where did the little tape go? Indeed. I know where there's a tape. Not the same tape. Can you tell me, Joey Joe Shabado? Can you entertain the people for a minute? <clears throat> um, entertain the people? That would be cool. If they were smart, they would. Um, I didn't have Costco where I came from in New York, so I've... I've never actually been there. He just... Uh. Oh, next topic. Hi, Winston's mom. Do you have a topic? How's California treating me? Pretty damn well. Well, Eric and Kim are treating me well. I don't know about California. Um, the people seem pretty chill, though. <clears throat> I don't really have a life yet. So, uh, you know, to be determined. Did you successfully entertain the people in my absence? Oh, you said I did. So much so that they don't want me back? Yep. Okay, you might good. as well just hand the channel over to me. I guess I, my worst nightmares come true. I turned out to be a Sith Lord. Be a Sith Lord. Okay, let's see. I'm shocked at how they tailor their inventory to local wants. Maybe your Costco will start carrying bong bowls or whatever. That'd be smart of them. They should. That's what I said. Um, where's that torchy porch? Did I take right it with here. me somewhere? Oh. Let's use this thing to light this thing as follows. Okay, so host Eric and I could swap I in TPs in our garage. How would Spacey like Dollywood? I'd love it. He'd love it. Supernova. Hi. Hi. Winston's mom. Topic. Dreams. Dreams like goals or dreams like sleepy time dreams? Sleepy time dreams doesn't seem to be a very interesting topic to me. Everyone has a life. It might not be a satisfactory one, but it's a life. If you didn't, you wouldn't be alive. Well said, philosophical thinker. Well said indeed. <laughs> the tape is the last place Eric will look. The tape? Yeah. <clears throat> Everyone guess where they think the tape is hiding. And hello to all. It was, I knew where it was. I knew where I was going for that tape. I th said to myself, Eric, what you need is to go to the car and pull out of the emergency car supplies thing. 
the electrical tape. And that's what I did. Will I put it back in there like I should? Well, Maybe. One thing you definitely learn as an electrician is the myriad of uses for electrical tape. I bet. It's uh, quite a handy thing to have around. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a myriad ethera, which is half myriad, half plethora of ways to use electrical tape. Or perhaps a plethoriad? Could be a plethoriad. It's true. How does six slot typically operate? Um, it's what we think other people should expect of us. And so we'll be able to provide it to them, but we won't probably we'll provide it in our own life. Gaff tape is another good one. Those over-the-door shoe pockets are fantastic for stuffing, storing stuff like electrical tape. Over the shore, do over the shore or over the door shoe pockets, over the shore do pockets, over the pores, ooh shockets. Jeebus, Eric, Eric Jeebus. Nice to meet you, Jeebus. I'm glad you're here. Um, your presence is game changing. It's a game changer. All of a sudden, we're playing a different game. We were playing hockey. Now we're playing tennis. A game changer, to say the least. <sighs> Indeed. Over the shoulder, boulder holder. Could hold tape as well. Over the shoulder, boulder holder is not something I normally wear, but I could begin to wear them just so I can carry tape, I suppose. It's also a cumbersome name for a bra. Over the shoulder boulder holder. Jeebus Geist. The slabs are better. A life changer, really. Hi, Jeebus. <coughs> yeah, well, if Jeebus is a game changer, then the slabs are the capacity to change games. Put it that way. Over the shoulder roller holders make the best beds for ferrets. I bet they do. Somehow, because you can curl right up on one of those things. Oh, we should get a ferret. No, we shouldn't. Slab slow, low, and bang and cheech and chong. Why is your hand shaking like a mother? I am bang, doing this with my knee. And my bong is on my leg, and my knee is bouncing up and down, and it's bouncing the bong, and it's bouncing my hand. See? I go. It's kind of a tongue twister to say. Slab slow and low and bang and cheech and chong. That's the kind of tongue twister thing to say. What's illegal in California? Ferrets. Ferrets are illegal in California? I believe they are. Oh. Can't have them. They are like uh, illegal themselves. As they can't have, even have themselves. They're like illegal aliens. You know, it should be illegal. What? Being this handsome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That is some INTP hunk. Because I'm dangerously sexy. What's in your fingertip? Ow! That's too hot. See what I'm saying? Uh, how is Spacey doing at Eric's? Making of a man camp. <laughs> Making of a man camp. Well, it's going pretty well. I'm about 10% more manly already. <laughs> you know. Well, I see. I see. Okay. I understand. I wasn't sure what modified what. I thought I thought, but the thought I thought wasn't the thought I thought I thought. If the thought I thought I thought had been the thought I thought, I wouldn't have thought so much. Well said. And does explain the process of your thinking uh, in a meticulous fashion, which I appreciate. As the only thing distinguishing feelings from thinking is meticulousness. Any feelers want to take an exception to that notion? <laughs> Probably a few out there would take exception to that. I think introverted feeling is meticulous. Would anybody agree that... It's every bit as meticulous as T.I. is. It must be, right? I mean, you presume there's a symmetrical yeah. degree of 
care, but right. can we say that all care is meticulous? I mean, in this context, probably, yeah. If you're just sifting through data in your head, I mean. Okay. Right? Evaluate presidential candidates. I need to know your endorsement if you aren't on the debate stage. Well, I mean, I don't think Biden's a good choice. I don't think Trump's a good choice, obviously. I don't think picking Elizabeth Warren's a good choice. Who about Andrew Yang? Doing the gang, gang. Uh, he's kind of like young, young Bernie. Yeah, sort of. He's got a young Bernie quality to him. I'm certainly not in favor of Bernie. Uh, how would you tell the difference between an ISTP and an INTP? Um, one's cool and the other isn't. <laughs> I mean, INTPs make jokes like that. What is the framework you use to determine relative strengths between slots? Ask because your explanations are not the way I've learned. Uh, well, I would say that they don't really, they're not about relative strength. They're about, it's a value matrix and, and the kind of value is sort of a, a limiter or definer of the relationship. So the dominant is an implicit value, which means it's, it functions as, your sort of underlying fundamental value that shit's got to at least a little bit uphold for you to be cool with it. For me, it would be novelty, for example. Um, second value is instrumental. For me, it's logical consistency, but it's just instrumental. So it's strong, quote unquote, in the sense that it's certainly something you can use effectively. And TI is a nice one because you can sort of test the level of effectiveness directly. So you can see for sure about it, that's the case. Um, but uh, it doesn't really matter to me. Like, ultimately, at the end of the day, logical consistency doesn't seem very important. It's something I expect myself to do, so I don't feel very satisfied when I do it. Third slot is absolute value, which is to say I feel paid off when I achieve in that. Fourth slot is uh, delegatory, which means I prefer to delegate it. I think it's valuable, but I don't want to do it myself. I'm willing to be self-deprecatory about it and stuff like that. Fifth slot is another absolute value like the third, but it's uh, directed towards the external rather than the internal. A sixth slot is demonstrative and counter value, which means you don't like the thing. You are pretty good at it. You expect, you expect others to expect it of you. So, when asked to provide it, you've got no problem providing it externally. But you don't like it in your own life, and you certainly don't want other people applying it to you. Um, Bernie's not an ENTP. Bernie is not an ENTP. There's no way. I don't know who Tulsi is or Mike Gravel. You think there's a correlation with sexual attraction and functions? For example, you being attracted to someone else's function because you lack it. Uh, I do think that I find that on some level, probably ISFP women are the most sort of immediately and urgently sexually attractive to me, but well, they're, they're very good at doing that. Doing that so yeah. it's hard to say that may, that may, may not just be because they're my conflictor it's, type. It may like be one of because their primary strengths is that's what they do, you know, luring people. So, uh, no, Bernie cannot possibly be an ENTP. You gotta be, you, can't, you gotta be kidding me. He just doesn't have the TI for it. No, he he clearly does not have the TI for it. I mean, Obama was an ENTP. I agree with you there. Obama's an ENTP, and Obama has sort of similar politics. So this isn't a political thing. Bernie just simply is not an ENTP. Well, no, he's not well-developed, healthy, or an ENTP. <laughs> I, I'm not even going you know, to argue with the well-developed or healthy right. part, whatever about those, but he's just not an ENTP. There's no fucking possible way. He has zero TI. He's probably an ENFP. I think, yeah, I think my dad was an ISTP. He was an engineer like Guns and Woodworking. I said Peter sexy the AF. I lost my virginity one after she asked me to rape her. <laughs> I said no and then re -umped. Wow, horse mumbler. 
did you you should what you should have said is if you if you ask me to do it it's not rape right yeah whose dude is grumpy oh bernie bernie's grumpy all the time wow basically no if somebody asks you to rape them then you're now obliged to be like okay and then wait a while Right, and then one day when they're not expecting it, and they and don't maybe want it, maybe they don't want it. Right, then you're gonna have to rape them. All right. Well, hopefully yeah. you do. Hopefully, you know. I think horsemen are the better approach. No, but would you like to have consensual sex? Uh, that's not what she wanted, which means he's he wasn't enough of a bad boy for her. You go. Okay, look. We will have consensual sex, but I will pretend it's non consensual as long as we both are in agreement on that. And she might be down with that. I mean, I agree with you, Obama. I'm not a fan of Obama. That's my point. I'm not a fan of Bernie or Obama, but Obama is actually an ENP, well, and or at least very likely is an ENP. Although I've heard the argument, and it could be the case that, be, that Obama never actually wrote any of his own speeches. That's all a speechwriter. The speechwriter could be an ENP. Um, but, um, that's my point. I don't like either Bernie or Obama. And so I'm not, there's no way you could say like, oh, well, you just don't like Bernie. So you don't think he's an HP or whatever. Yeah, I agree. Bernie's a real progressive. He's got no TI at all. That's, yeah, essentially. Yeah. I mean, is this what that means? So, being a real progressive is highly valuing the individual uniqueness and the experience of the individual in the way that that sees equity is is of maximal importance. Ignoring the mechanisms by which you get there, ignoring the principles that get violated, just finding with means and just sort of pig-headedly plowing ahead, and you know, GI polar. What would happen if Elon Musk ran for president? Instant dystopia. Is he an American citizen? I don't know if he has dual citizenship or not. I know he's from South Africa. Oh. So, probably couldn't. Gavel got Biden out of previous posts run. I don't know what that means. Gravel got Biden out of previous posts run. I don't know what that means. Oh, this is POTUS. Of Gerald's game okay, shit. yeah. I don't know what the fuck. What do you mean, gravel got him out of it? What does that mean? The poor likes to be. Or, we as the government will give you this free stuff. And nobody will have to pay for it. It's the magic, magic money that comes from nowhere. Yeah, his TI is. Um, had his T replaced with an F. I mean, as far as politics goes in general, I am not satisfied with any of the candidates. I would like to run myself. I don't have the resources or the the time for it right now. I got to take care of my mom. But it's frustrating because the country needs me right now to be president. I, there's lots of shit that needs to be fixed. And number one on the list is sort of the na national discourse about politics. I can fix that. I'm the only one of the candidates who can possibly fix that. And it's the most important thing to fix of all. Yeah. Yeah, it's depressing when I think about it because... It feels like a long way off before I'm actually ready to fucking put a handle on that. Well, it's better to make sure you do it right when you do it. Yeah, true. Because it's not a it's not a joke. <laughs> right. I mean, I suspect I would I suspect I will. I should start, you know, planning to do it now, really. Plan to launch my presidential campaign shortly after the next election cycle. 
you know, so shortly after either Trump's reelected or somebody else is elected, I'll start campaigning. It looks like Trump's going to be reelected pretty, pretty solidly. Uh. In a recent interview, somebody asked Bernie about him being a millionaire, and he said he earned his money and doesn't owe any to anybody, basically, which is strange of him to say. <clears throat> He'd say, "Well, I've already paid my taxes." You know. I think we should plan on buying a very large boat, setting sail, and you host pirate radio. Everyone brings two animals and two books. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of a homebody. That sounds like seasickness as well. I get motion sick. I'd rather like go up in the mountains into some caves or something. Hunt gazelles on the plane below. I love people who repeat neoliberal smears. What are neoliberal smears? Yeah, what is a neoliberal smear? Who got neoliberal smeared? Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be that hard to conquer New Zealand. We're just in the middle of what fuck nowhere, so nobody cares. Well, it would just be a it would be a public relations disaster to try to conquer New Zealand. Yeah. I'm curious about the neoliberal smears, though. What comprises a neoliberal smear? Is it when a neoliberal gets a pap smear? We're gonna have to do a pap smear. Sorry, lady. Pap smear. Bernie is a millionaire who votes against the 1%. Oh, you think that's a neoliberal smear of an actual liberal or a progressive, right? I mean, I don't think it's in. I don't think it's um, an indictment of Bernie that he's well off. I don't think that's an indictment of him at all, and I don't think it's indicative of hypocrisy. He's trying to vote for higher taxes, and he will presumably pay those higher taxes. And he thinks that's a good thing. It doesn't mean he thinks all his money should be taken away. Uh, nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it integrity. I'd call it consistency with conviction. He's not inconsistent with his conviction. He's voting his beliefs in that regard. It's. It's not. Um, it's not instrumental to personal gain. It's not dishonest in that fashion. But, um, you know, to vote against wealth creation, to vote against people spending their own money that they generated by their own work, and to vote against individuals deciding the fate of their wealth in terms of things like charity and stuff rather than the government taking it away. And there's, there's lots of, the government takes a lot of money from people and it provides some useful services. And yet the notion that we need more taxes is frankly mentally ill on anybody. We've got shit tons of taxes on everybody. Hi, Sweetie Chandran. Black metal. And interior means black metal. I have to go to my internship and I'm late crying eyes. Oh, Sreddy, you're never going to graduate from intern to mailroom if you are late. Well, I mean, Tim Bulwer, but to say that he is a millionaire who shouldn't represent us is dumb. I would say he's a millionaire who should not represent us. And those two things are unrelated to each other. You know, he should not represent us because he's not done any thinking about anything. It's like, it's just his feelings running amok all over the place. Things are more complicated and more simple than he's making it. And we need to respect the the authority and power of local of, of, of the local culture, the local milieu, the local reality. In other words, respect my ability to locally decide how to spend my resources. 
and respect my local community to decide how much to tax me. Most of my taxes should be the most local. And the least of my taxes should be the most far away from me. That's basic common sense. No matter how much taxes you think ought to be taken away. If you think shit ton, it should be least the, the least centralized, you know, the least far away from me should take more from me. And the ones further away from me should take less because presumably they need to have less control over my life because they're covering a bigger scope of area. So they need less specific control because that is delegated to the lower level of um, governance. In other words, our pyramid is upside down. Our triangle is upside down. Bernie's not going to help that problem at all. But, you know, and even if it is upside down, I think the total amount of taxation is ridiculous. Well, I'd like to be the president in the normal constitutional fashion. I'd like to restore the primacy of the Constitution as the law of the land. I'd like to work with the courts in terms of case law, establishing precedent to protect the individual and the states and local communities from inter interference from the federal government. I would like the federal government's purview to be reduced closer to what is dictated by the Constitution. Who's saying he won't represent you because he sold a book? He won't represent you at all. He's going to, as you said, vote his convictions. He's not interested in representing you. He's interested in voting his convictions. If he were interested in your well-being or anybody else's, he wouldn't vote those stupid-ass convictions. I am a good person. Space Force should take the least amount. Right, yeah. The UN should take the least amount. Tails. What's up in double O-P-D-O-D-double-G? I don't know what that spells. S in Snoop Dogg. Oh, it spells Snoop Dogg. Well, no, like... You read the smear from neoliberal media. What do you mean I read the smear? I didn't. I'm reading people. What people put in the chat. That's what I read out loud. I'm reading your words out loud too. To say he won't represent me because he sold a book is ridiculous. Nobody said that. Yeah, nobody said that. You're getting real defensive, bro. Hmm. Creepy pumpkin versus modern, modern Socrates with the blowtorch. What's creepy pumpkin? Bye, bye, Freddy Chandran. Good, well hit chest. Coin was heads. Sorry, I lost. Well, that's good. I was, um, I like to gather up losses so I can catch one for a win at some point. <laughs> Playing a slot machine. You gotta feed the slot for a while before it pays off. Who are you? Anti Anton Chigger? I don't know who that is. Do you know who Anton Chigurh is? No. I don't know either. Some Russian guy, I bet. Oh, you're attacking the millionaire smear guy. Uh, well, millionaire smear guy, that's a smear. I don't really, I still don't understand why it would be a smear, though. I was just saying that... Uh, I mean, it's intended to convey the wrong idea, I guess. It's worth it's worth negating that notion that just because Bernie's rich and he's not even rich, he's a millionaire, he's not being rich. Um, just because Bernie has some money doesn't mean that he's he can't be progressive and vote for high taxes and other stupid shit like that. He certainly can. There's nothing contradictory about that. Dude, that movie is fucking great. No country for old men. Bad guy. Hmm. Space Force should be top priority. We need huge, big, beautiful spaceships and CS, CCX, ASE, TGE dudes who did Mars come back to town. Hmm. It's a little confusing. A little bit confusing. Am I anti-war? Sure, I'm anti-war. Of course I'm anti-war. You might even say that to a certain extent I'd probably be as isolationist as a president in terms of use of the military as any president in recent memory, or more so. Do I carry around a captive bolt stunner? No.
What do you think about the criminal justice system of countries like Finland? Tulsi Gabbard is your pick? <sighs> I just don't have any much faith in anybody else. I'm doing a good job. Anton Segur is the scary bad guy from No Country for Old Men. He kills people with a captive bolt gun and massive suppressed shotgun, four gauge. I see. Leave Bernie Sanders alone. He's a nice guy. I like his hair. Bernie Sanders will get absolutely eaten alive if he gets elected president. He's got, he has not one half the fucking wits to handle it. And he's not so mindless like Trump that he doesn't even realize he's not handling it. He's going to be a mess. He's going to be a neurotic fucking crying disaster if he were to become president. I think Bernie's, I, I think he's probably ENFP. Be my guess. Yeah, probably. Do you think there's a fundamental discord in terms of who we want to rule versus the types who want to and go after rulership, rule, rulership? In general, except um, I'm going after it. I'm going after it for reasons that ENTPs don't normally, aren't normally motivated by, probably. I have a S I F I T I N I cluster bomb of, uh, of about the American citizen democracy and what it ought to be. So it's unlike most candidates who just want to shit on the government. I want I want to restore the dignity of the American citizen democracy, and that means doing more than just shitting on the government. It means making the government a genuine asset to the country. So I'm not just a libertarian. I'm not just a conservative. I'm not just a liberal. I'm not just a whatever. I'm, I have exactly the right position on everything. And um, to the extent that I don't, I'm interested and eager to figure out how I can better it. I, I, go, I will go into the office of genuine humility and also vastly more confidence than anybody who's ever ruled the country before or governed the country or whatever, been in the executive spot. So the reason I use rules is because the question is said rulership. I don't see the president as a ruler. I see the president as an executive as he's supposed to be in the Constitution. So, yeah, neurotic fanatics killing people is fucking stupid and it needs to stop. You're crazy in making a subjective statement saying Bernie's not ENTP. You would get a lot of views if you type in. What, what makes my statement subjective? I didn't really warrant it with anything. I mean, I, I did. I pointed out that he's got no TI. That's a warrant. But I didn't really back it up with anything. Um, but it's definitely not a subjective statement. I'm making, I'm telling you, my objective analysis of Bernie Sanders as a professional typologist, is there's zero chance he's an ENTP, and as an ENTP. And I pointed out that it's not just because he's liberal or something, because I think Obama was an ENTP, and he was more, he, he was way more big government than I think makes, makes sense. So it's not, it's clearly not an issue of bias in that regard. So, no, it's not subjective at all. I'm telling you, for lots of good reasons, although I haven't articulated those reasons, granted, um, that Bernie's definitely not an HP. His TI is better than mine? Okay, well, Tim, look, just because you agree with his politics doesn't mean his politics have good TI to them or that they represent the sort of politics that somebody with strong TI is likely to articulate. So, that's just how it goes. I mean, I get that you agree with his politics. That doesn't mean his politics are the smartest politics or that they're the most TI consistent. You might say they're the most FI consistent. You might say that FI consistency is preferable to TI consistency, and that's fine. But don't try to tell me that Bernie Sanders is sound TI at all. He doesn't. That's just crazy talk. That's now, crazy talk. If a Hollywood studio got shot up for them making too much cape shit, I'd be on board. Hmm. Cape shit. 
Which music do you like to listen to recently? <sighs> I haven't really started. I haven't really brought on any new music onto my my listening palette for a while now. Um, I listen to either my own music or the radio or like some hits, a hits playlist I have of like radio hits. Um, you know, I listen to a lot of rock, uh, I don't know, shit like that. Um, let's see here. Hero Lamb asks, so you believe Bernie is honest and genuine through and through and being himself, you assume he is. I think he is, yeah. I think that um, Hero Lamb is right, that Bernie is being absolutely honest. He's genuine in his convictions. He's well-intentioned, well-motivated, not a dumb person, but nevertheless wrong, and if he were to implement his vision, it would be a clusterfuck of a disaster of a fiasco. So that's just how it is. I mean, I mean, but Bernie believes in that shit. That's what makes him not T.I. sound at all. He thinks that somehow you're going to be able to give free college to everybody and that that's going to help. Like, the reason college, a college degree is more valuable than a high school degree is because of scarcity. If everybody has a college degree, it's not going to be worth anything. So you're already seeing its value being watered down. Yeah. Entry-level positions asking for a bachelor's degree because because everyone and their mother has a bachelor's degree. Right. So, um... No, I haven't yet, but I've thought about it since then, and I will get around to it. No way Bernie is in TI. He's heavily rooted in outside systems, well-established from long ago. I wouldn't say it's his vision. That's not TI. That's T-E-S-I, maybe, or something like that. It's not TI. TI is all about, I've come to the right conclusion on my own because I'm smarter than everybody else. TI doms ultimately all will think that, so do TI tool users. If you can, you can tell me all the reasons in the world. I'm going to be, I will make the decision about who's correct here, whether it's this expert or that expert or that expert, even though I don't know shit about it. That's TI. And if you're good enough at it, you're actually right. We had 90% income tax on 1% in the past, and it was great. For whom? Look, Tim Bulwer, why don't I just take you down to the hospital, fill you full of anesthetic, and I take out your heart, your lungs, your liver, your kidney, your spleen. Each of those organs can save a life. Now, you know, after we do it, it was fine. We taxed Tim Bulwer, most of his organs, and uh, it was great. For everybody. Right, Tim? It was great for everybody, huh? It was great for everyone, right? When we taxed you all your organs and saved all those lives? It was great for everyone, right? Oh, it, it wasn't... Oh, you're dead now. Oh, it wasn't great for you. Oh. Everyone was prosperous in this time of a 90%, I mean, marginal tax rate, I suppose. I, I don't know. Who paid that? I, I don't I feel like he's... Who actually paid that? Because, you know, there was well, first no... First of all, yeah, nobody would have actually paid that full tax rate. There was no IRS until after World War II. Yeah. Um, but this would have been prior to World War II, for sure. <sighs> This would have been in like maybe the it was 20s like, or something like and that. It, it wasn't even legally required to pay your ta your federal taxes. It was encouraged. What makes a good topic, Zandy asks. Well, it's a topic that's got lots of juicy juice to it. Um, topic that people feel strongly about, but not too strongly. Politics is kind of an iffy topic because, you know, people get upset about it. Uh... If food was free, would it be worthless? No, because food is something we consume. It's an actual resource, right? Whereas a bachelor's degree 
is a status symbol that is supposedly representative of competency that we have and possess within us, an asset that we retain rather than a resource we consume. They're fundamentally different class of things. It's a category error to compare them like that. 50s were golden. <sighs> yeah, you know, one thing I loved about the 50s when the 90% tax rate was, was there is there were so many wonderful services provided for African Americans in the South. You know, it's like there weren't any poor African Americans down there then. They, they all had they all lived in their luxury government mansions and and enjoyed equality at the taxpayers' expense. Um nowadays it's like she's like, where 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 did all the services go? Jesus uh, it's like there's poor people now and, and they used to be all all rich people and Tim Boer lives in fantasy land. Um Clapping is a good subject. Do you clap on the one and three or the two and four? Both or either, depending on the song. Uh, may switch midway through the song if I feel like switching to the offbeat. You know, depends what the onbeat's on to, if the song is playing in the offbeat or not. Being Mexican in the U.S. in the 50s was amazing. It was. It was. It was so much fun. Oh, si, senor. Oh, Juan. You're hilarious, you little Mexican. Welcome to the 1950s. Go wash my car. Yeah. Joey, 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 Shabadoo, and I want hot pot. Please do. You want hot pot? I want hot pot. Spacey wants pot hot. Therefore, we're going to get not pot. So all we're left with is hot. And that's just going to burn us all. And nobody wants that. Weren't Mexicans getting beat up in the streets in California during that time? Well, I mean... We had to spend that 90% tax from the rich people on something. We could always afford more billy clubs. <laughs> you know, we got to afford more billy clubs and we used them to and, beat the Mexicans. And I was, if you keep listening, you might find out the real reasons why the 50s were golden and you may not like it. <laughs> the, the, you know that underclass we keep down with violence? They sure are economically beneficial to us golden 50s people. You know, it's like... <laughs> yeah, isn't it wonderful how cheap these black servants are? We can we can afford them. It's because they don't have any Look, rights. The funny thing is, even, oh, the, right. even the blacks were doing better in the 50s than they were after the 60s. It's really ironic, but like... <laughs> Their own squalor is more dignified than government squalor. Exactly. <laughs> That's what people need to understand. <laughs> it's projected that at the current rate, African American median income will become non existent by 2030. <laughs> he did say medium. I was correcting and thinking it meant median. Maybe he meant the medium income. Yeah. Okay, well. So that could reasonably be non existent at some point. Yeah, well, let's say he meant the median income. Okay. Does that mean that he, is he counting debt so that they cancel out the income? He must be, right? In that case, it might actually make yeah, a little bit of sense. Be, there has to be negative income at, at play here. Yeah, and that's what you income. mean. Or are you are you thinking yeah, about talking that? about income. Okay, so are you saying the median income when factored in with debt will become zero by 2030 at current projected rates for African Americans? Because, you know, I'm periodically African-American. It doesn't seem to affect my finances at all. Who is that whispering in the trees? It's two sailors, and they're on leave pipes and chains and swinging hands. Who's your daddy? Yes, I am fat cat came to play. Now you can't run fast enough. That wasn't bad. I like that. Um, that's what Yang said? That's what Yang said? I feel like Yang is not stupid enough to say something like that. Okay, so then the question, Tim where is when you heard Yang said that, you should have asked the same question that I just asked, which is, do you mean, <laughs> you should have first said, that sounds fucking stupid as hell and ridiculous. There's no possible way that the median income of a demographic can be zero. And then, then I immediately would have thought, okay, well, maybe if you're factoring in debts. Um, but then, of course, you have the problem of determining race, which is arbitrary and, and meaningless. 
50s were especially golden since being gay had to be cured because it was a mental disorder. Good point, <laughs> Ruse Moose. I remember that I pronounced your name. Um, that's a good point. Being gay in the 50s was absolutely delightful. You just go on your gay pride parade and that would be your last parade ever. It's fun. The drug wars on the in the eighties seem to have a big impact on African American culture. Well, we gotta spend that money on something. We gotta spend all that tax dollars, right? We have had a well funded war on drugs. Fortunately, some progressives in government, people who believe in big government, they got on their they got behind their convictions. They said no more drugs. We're gonna make a federal case out of it. We're gonna spend trillions of dollars on this. And it ain't gonna do a goddamn thing. Hooray! What is this nonsense? I'm reading this article that Yang was pulling from when he said that. I mean, it's such I, garbage. This is vomit. Like, what, what is there? Is there a logic to it that they explain now? No. They don't even say something like, "Now I know this sounds ridiculous, but." Uh, no, they're already. With the U, they're saying shit like with, with the U.S. set to become majority minority by twenty forty four. How can you become majority minority? <laughs> Don't you then become the majority? <laughs> you can just tell it's written by a dumbass. <laughs> Math. Japan has nostalgia for the sixties. Well, I've got nostalgia for your mom's face hanging to you. It didn't do me any good. Uh, let's pull bong rips. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds very good. Sounds like a plan. Who wants a bong rip on the live chat? Any of you guys want me to transubstantiate a bong rip for you? No one? Okay. Oh, you're already ahead of me, huh? Okay, good. Um, there's nothing like being gay and black in the 1950s. Prancing and trancing all around town in the 1950s. It's a golden time of freedom and joy. <laughs> uh, your mama jokes is an excellent topic. Joey, 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 Joey. Your mama is so your mama's face that I said, hey there, your mama's face, do it last night. How about that one? <laughs> Does she remind me of you and you of me? I don't know. Uh, I'm the majority minority as a Latino woman. No, you're a Latina woman, Sandy. You're Latina, okay? It's kind of odd at the end, because you're Mexican, and they have A's and O's at the end of their words. All right, I know. I've been Mexican many, many times. Hola, senorita. Part of my language, part of my heritage. They call me a wero sometimes, the Mexicans do. I'm kind of a white-looking wero, white-looking Mexican. So, who is Spacey favoring right now in terms of candidates? Well, what do you mean? Who do I like the best, or who do I think is going to win? Those are obviously two different things. <laughs> who do you like the best? I think Tulsi Gabbard is probably... The best, just because she talks about basically nothing but stopping foreign regime change wars, which is something that I can get behind um, pretty, pretty heavily. Yeah, well, um, but uh, I think Trump is almost certainly going to win again because of just the absolute clusterfuck that the Democrats have created. For themselves. The thing is, one of my campaigning slogans is during my presidency, I'm going to do my best to have America kill nobody. Have nobody killed in America's name. But 
it, non extra legally, which is how we're doing it now. Um, and if I fail at that, I'm going to try to make sure America kills as few people as possible. You know, I don't, I don't like the fact that the presidency has become a, uh, a preemptive killing machine. It's, it's fucking wrong. Oh, I forgot Trump's going to get impeached for not doing anything impeach worthy. I don't, I don't know if he's quite impeachable at, at this point. I mean, I mean, he's impeachable, but I don't know if... Is he? It, it, the, the Democrats can impeach him. At least, probably, they could get the votes to impeach him. But, um, whether or not the Senate would pass the articles of impeachment is another question, and I would say no. And so he wouldn't end up being getting fully impeached. You know, because the impeachment process is, is... Oh, oh, she didn't say he would be impeached, my bad. I just I don't see any other reason why he wouldn't finish the term since it's almost over. He might die. He is old. Eh, I guess he could. <laughs> will I issue letters of marks and remark of reprisal? No, I, I won't. Um, it's a good question. It's a good... <laughs> That one, I think, is pretty uh, pretty resolved in terms of the case The media is case swimming law. the progressives hard. Who, who what universe is that? I know. It's like, well, what do you mean by that? Like, it doesn't make any sense because the media is not in collusion against progressives. So the extent that the majority of people are saying this is nonsense, it's because it's not very well thought out, usually. Just sort of like, let's tax the rich and spend more money on who knows what. What are some of your other core positions, Eric? Well, I mean, I'd like to see the American government decide, understand what it is and what its purpose is. I'd like to to, in general, see the federal government do those jobs that it does better. I'm not entirely, like, 100% opposed to some sort of health care solution to the current fucking quagmire. The current quagmire is we've got this weird insurance setup where you end up paying more than you should for most of your life because then at the end of the life you're going to need a lot of health care or something and that's that's bothersome to me i think in general people need to stop thinking about health care as some sort of core entitlement or right and you think about it as a resource and not something we should abuse the idea that we should be paying for all this preventative medicine and shit like that that's going to save money in the long run is bullshit People need to use the healthcare system sparingly, and it should cost them something to use it so as to discourage frivolous usage of it. I think, you know, to get rid of all that fucking preventative healthcare shit, have a, you know, yeah, kind of level deductible on shit so that people are discouraged from going to the doctor and make it universal, maybe. Redirect funds from Medicare and, and uh, disability. We need to get people off disability. That's bullshit. That's just welfare by another name. <sighs> Joey, Joe, 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 Shabadee, my daughter is one quarter Mexican. My first wife was half Mexican. Her mom was Mexican, Mexican from Chihuahua. Or no, not Chihuahua. Michoacan. And her dad was super white from West Virginia. So that was my first wife's parents, right? So my first wife was half Mexican. So my daughter's quarter Mexican. Uh, that's why she looks a little brownish, you know, a little swarthy, a little racially impure. 
Something not quite white about her. <laughs> right, something not quite white about her. Uh, Donald J. Trump. Hello, everyone. I am enjoying a tremendous KFC breakfast. God bless you all, and God bless America. Hi, Donald. How are you doing this morning? Is it morning already? No, it's not still night time. It's 10 p.m. Why would you be enjoying Donald. breakfast? So, Eric, do you think discouraging people from going to the doctor will be good for America? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I look, if you really need to go to the doctor, you should. Yeah. But the, the idea that somehow people should go to the doctor every time they feel a little twinge in their whatever, it puts an unnecessary burden on the healthcare system. Oh, that's true. Insurance encourages that because if you've got a low copay or something like that and they try to push You might as well use it if you, if you, you got it. Yeah, you might as well use it if you got it. You're paying for it, you might as well use it. Yeah. Um, and lots of other in ideas in the mix encourage that kind of shit. We should make it a reasonable level of deductible that costs people something to go to the doctor's office. It discourages frivolous doctor visits. It makes healthcare a properly understood resource like any other resource. In the status quo, it's treated as something other than a resource that needs to be managed. And that's the problem with how we're understanding healthcare. The insurance company is just this incredibly um, cancerous middleman thing between individuals and healthcare providers. If we're going to have a cancerous middleman, we're probably better off with a government cancerous middleman than a profiteering ca cancerous middleman in this context, perhaps. So I'm not entirely closed-minded to the possibility of of government intervention in healthcare. I don't know what it would look like exactly. It would certainly look nothing like the incredibly complicated clusterfuck of a disaster that Obamacare was. It would be something simple like... Um, You know, it would. It's like I could conceive of a. I could conceive of a system in which all other social programs are are yanked. All that money is redirected to a single UBI slash healthcare thing that pays everybody's healthcare, and they can choose sort of a level of plan, and whatever's left over they get is UBI. It would have to be. It, it, we could do that with the existing funds if we redirected everything. Um, would, would it be much left over beyond healthcare? Probably not much left over. It would eat up most of that expense. So there'd be a little something else for UBI. And then fuck everybody else for it with all the other social shit. Like, oh, but, but we farmers need subsidies. Fuck you. We banks need bailing out. Fuck you. No. You know, if you really want if you really want tax dollars to go to work, keep it out of the government's fucking hands. Put it back into people's hands. Okay, fine. We'll pay for this health thing. And then we'll put the rest of the money back in people's pockets by a UBI. That makes sense to me. It makes it makes sense as a preferable alternative to the status quo. And it means that a vast majority of the waste that is implicit in government bureaucracy will be by the wayside. Now, note, I would say additionally, one of my positions is I believe in environmental protection. I believe in environmental laws and most libertarian type people aren't very strong about uh, environmental protections. I am strong about that. I've been to China. I've experienced what it's like when you don't have strong environmental protections. I grew up in California in the seventies. We used to have third stage small rollers when I was a kid, catalytic converters in California, strong environmental regulations made it such that now the area out here is pretty damn good. Most of the time. I, I don't remember the last time we had even the first stage small roller. So I have seen it work. I've experienced it working. I've experienced what it's like when it, there aren't any such regulations. And I am a believer in environmental regulations. I think it's an appropriate purview for federal government to, to take on because there's not really any other body that's adequate to deal with that because the environment is the air, which passes over everything and water that passes between states and all that kind of shit. So there's lots of good reason to think federal government is the appropriate sovereign to manage that. So, and that's another one of my positions is I am in favor of environmental well, regulation. Eric sounds like someone who is actually progressive when you take what the word actually means. I would agree with that. No, Tim, I'm not going to be raising taxes on the rich. I'm going to be trying to eliminate capital gains taxes entirely. That's money that's already been taxed. There's okay. no reason the government should be taxing it twice. The people who are normally referred to as progressives are actually regressive.
If we move the medical industry to a market driven system or move the bizarre insurance networks that don't even function as insurance, medical care might be affordable for most Americans. I agree with you. If we just stripped out all the fucking middlemen from it and said, no middlemen allowed, doctors have to be just straight up free market. They can charge whatever they want and you can pay whatever you can afford. There'll be doctors that, that charge little, doctors that charge a lot. Well, that's how it was. And then people started to pool their money together and basically a small scale insurance thing, right? Just in case somebody needed a lot of money in case something happened health wise, right? And then later on, it got to a point where they had bigger and bigger and bigger groups of people doing that. And then eventually someone started an insurance company. Like, Are these tax, are these assets you're proposing that you tax instead of income? Do they get taxed once or they get taxed repeatedly? Like, like housing, like a homeowner, a home property tax gets taxed every year uh, based on the value of the home. That kind of taxation is... It's basically saying is tax on your ability to exist. Now, I, I, I don't, I'm not saying there shouldn't be property taxes at all, but I'm saying that they should be limited to physical real estate, namely real property, because real property is land. And we want to discourage land monopolies for sure. And I think it's reasonable that we have property taxes because the ability to control land is the ability to monopolize certain kinds of land intensive resource production. So it's appropriate to have property taxes. It's appropriate for local schools to be funded through home taxes, taxes on home. But um, that's assuming at the, at the consent and decision of the local community, fine. If you're going to have schools like that, but I don't think it's appropriate to tax other assets. Like you would real land, real estate, you know, it's certainly not appropriate to tax stocks like that or capital gains in, in enterprises like that. It makes no sense at all. Capital gains taxes are an absolute disaster economically because what they do is they cause people to hold on to their money in their existing investments rather than having to do anything. But why? They're avoiding those capital gains taxes. Well, now it's not a good year to pay 15000 in capital gains taxes. We don't need that money right now. Let's just leave it sitting there. We'll see what the market does. Maybe I'll, it'll go up so much that I'll cover those capital gains. Of course, there'll still be the capital gains taxes. They'll just be bigger now, but now you'll be like, well, I've got more profit, though, so that's good. Maybe just hold on to it longer. Avoid those capital hey, i got to pay a big tax thing on this. I have sell that asset. You know, It's like that kind of shit interferes with the movement of money through the economy. Every time money purposely moves through the economy, wealth is created, essentially. And or you could say every time new meaningful work is done for somebody wealth is created the amount of the amount of money in the economy has to continue growing because people keep doing new meaningful work that produces new wealth in the world and the, money, the amount of money has to reflect that amount of wealth the wealth itself is basically an intangible quality called beholdence which says if i do you a favor of some su substantial note then you're going to owe me one well money eliminates that process um, replaces that process so Anyway, medical products shouldn't be so overpriced. They are because of the, of the, uh, what do you call it? Insurance companies. Well, there's also a bit of an oligopoly as far as the, who manufactures medical equipment. Um, Next use of oligopoly. I never heard that word before, I don't yeah. think. I like it, though. What's the topic of discussion? Oligopolies. We're talking oligopolies tonight. It's a good topic. Does government commercialize health insurance so that insurance companies would decrease prices and competition because between these concerns, the price actually went up and higher own risk costs? Right. I mean, the thing about... I don't think health insurance is subject to the normal market mechanics because it's not really insurance. You're, it's just a middleman between you and the thing you're paying for. How is it insurance? I mean, basically, there is a conceivable situation where because you're paying whatever your monthly insurance premium is, that you'll end up getting way more money out of it 
if you get in like a fucking car accident and you need like reconstructive surgery and shit, you know, if you've only had it for a year. Right. Right. But so if that, you don't that's have what's insurance about it, but if you don't have yeah. that, um, that big, big cost trauma, traumatic, big thing happen, then you're, it's like, well, the whole point of insurance is you're guarding against something that may or may not happen. Right. It's still worth the money to you. But on my car insurance, I don't use my car insurance ever. <laughs> Because I never get into an accident, but I use my health insurance all the time. Right. Even well, though if you I don't get into an wrong accident, you wouldn't have to have fifty thousand dollars when you did. Right, but the point is, there's that's, no. That's all it is. But the thing is, the health insurance aspect is different because you're expected to use it on a regular basis for things like checkups, when you get sick or whatever. That's true. I mean, maybe some people offer plans that. The you know, are car. differently balanced. So, like, they may have a higher copay, so you don't want to go to the doctor every fucking time, but they may have, like, you know... Right. Well, see, this is the thing. Everybody, if they were to do it correctly, instead of backwards, like they did with Obamacare, <laughs> they'd say, we need to make sure everybody has, at the very least, catastrophic coverage, so that there are no circumstances where somebody goes into the hospital with all their bones broken, can't pay anything. It's kind of like it, having liability on your car insurance, basically, right? right? Yeah. Instead, we get Obamacare, which says everybody's got to have these preventative plans with this in it and that in it and the other thing in it and, it and that you can't even sell just catastrophic coverage anymore. So that's where shit's fucked up. If you want to force everybody to have catastrophic coverage, fine, but I think the government should pay for it then too. I don't believe in this individual mandate, which is I am required by law to purchase health insurance in other words, I can't live in the country without paying money to ensure the fact that I might get sick someday. It is It just seems asinine. Well, it's a system designed to make insurance companies money. Is it not? Yeah. I mean, I, I think instead what would be um, that pays health insurance costs over a certain amount only once that deductible has been met by the individual who suffered the health care costs. So if the deductible were, say, $10,000, it would be an effective um, catastrophic care coverage, but it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be used by almost anybody anytime because most people aren't going to incur that level of cost on a given medical expense. So most of the time they're going to be responsible for their own medical co costs. And then that will uh, make, you know, make the use of the, the healthcare system appropriate again, you know, as needed rather than willy nilly like it is now. Well, yeah, then you could actually, for example, afford an ambulance ride when you needed one. <laughs> I like the traditional Chinese custom of healthcare. When you get sick or injured, you stop contributing to the payment of the town doctor and don't start paying him again until you're well. <laughs> I like that idea. That's funny. Everybody pays them when they're well and doesn't pay them when they're sick. Are you obligated to have basic health insurance? In the United States, yeah, you're obligated to purchase some sort of health insurance. I don't. I'm out of compliance. But the only expense is there's an extra, like, tax that, that gets applied. That, you know. As a kid, we had catastrophic coverage and used a private Mexican concierge doctor for minor issues. It was perfect. Right. Makes sense. That's the best ready I've read all week. I agree. It's a pretty good one, uh, Horse Mongler. That's a good idea. In Chinese healthcare, if you hit someone with your car, run them over again so you don't have to pay for hospital bills. There's that, too. China, I mean, I tell you, those cars, they have no respect for pedestrians. In Shanghai, you better watch your fucking life when you're crossing the street. They will run your ass over. I don't have any medical insurance, yeah. Um, I have to pay out of pocket. But the doctors, they don't get a lot of cash patients. So my doctor doesn't charge me very much. He charges me like 60 or 80 bucks or something. So we charge the insurance company, I'm sure, 350 or, you know. Um, any other last thoughts before... Uh, somebody's got some exciting topic or motion they wish to f place on the 
docket. Turkish prisons and I don't know if this is still true. Make the families pay for the support of the prisoners. Midnight Express, that movie scared me out of an assignment to Turkey. Hmm. Make the families pay for the support of the prisoners. I don't like that idea very much. Random last thoughts at Host Eric's Happy Hours. Eric needs a new hat. I should probably go hat shopping. I kind of feel like I need to go to bed. It's only 10.05, but I'm probably not going to sleep a lot of hours because I'm going back on cycle. But I need to... Uh, and you get maybe four or five hours, six hours. Who would I put in charge of the Fed? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, and the Fed. Well, I'm not going to do anything super impulsive or dramatic that's going to negatively impact large economic considerations without a lot of thought first. Oh, yeah. So um, I don't know who I'd appoint to put in charge of the Fed. But uh, I'd have to I'd have to look into possible candidates. Um, I, I'd have to do some research. It's something I have to I'll have to consider, you know. But I'm not I'm not there yet. It's a, a higher level or more precise level of knowledge than I currently have worked out. Hats are important. You should bring top hats back into fashion. That's a good idea, Horse Mobile. I could start wearing a top hat. What do you think about the illusion of progressivism and continuous economic growth? The illusion of progressivism and continuous economic growth? Can you, like, what? What does that mean? It means that, that there's not anything progressive about continuous economic growth. Is that what you're trying to get at? It looks yeah, progressive, gotta, but it's not. Or I have to reword that in a, um, <laughs> a less vague manner. Try to make the well a little less. Yeah. You know. Try again. You don't have to put another quarter in, but just. North Korea is always an interesting topic. How does that place still exist? Well, Kim Jong Un runs a tight ship. When you put it that way, all numbers are arbitrary, aren't they, Freddy? Except for two. Two is not arbitrary. Supernova, I work a desk job. I'm not attending school for anything at the moment, but plans to do so the next year. Hmm. Go to school to learn how to pan for gold. Fuzzy, tall, black top hats, but faux fur, not beaver. Okay. The only good thing about the Fed is the gold standard and cues. And war and senators. Cues over pews. In terms of deciding the ballot voting age, yeah. I should, I feel like dogs should vote. That's probably not a bad idea, Hembo. Modern liberals are backwards. I mean, I, I just don't, I don't like those kind of terms. Liberals, conservatives, progressives, whatever. It's like, talk to me about specific issues. I'd rather talk to you about as a human being who agrees with me about some things and disagrees with me about some things, then as a progressive and me, uh, whatever freaking label you want to throw on me, I don't like that shit. You might look better in a bowler or a pork pie, though, now that I think about it. Top hats kind of necessitate coattails. Um, I mean, I could just go fedora. I have this hat here, you know. I could just wear this in the present all the time. Wow. That's an op, eh? President here. I'm going to tell you some things. Why is it two arbitrary? Because two is the loneliest number since the number one. Three can be as bad as two. That's why. Wigs versus Tories versus no nothings. So, what party label will you choose when you run? I mean, you could put me in either main party if you wanted to, or it could just be party list. Probably, probably whichever one seems more opportunistic at the time, if either of them do. Oh, I'd be Democrat. I'd be Republican. I don't care. Yeah. I could it doesn't be, really matter. I don't think Trump cared either. I could be libertarian, except I want to win. Um, 
People obsess over being a victim of evil white men. I do that sometimes. Every once in a while, I'm like, fucking honkies, keeping me down. People obsess over being victims in every possible way. And that's, I think, the healthcare debate is even tied into that in a certain way. Mm. The concept of always being weak and needing someone else to take care of you. I always wondered, like, the progressives are worried about the poor. Why is no, it? They're not worried about them. They just identify with them. But why? Why don't we hear about these disenfranchised groups? Why don't we hear them saying, like, "I'm the one who can't take care of himself. I need the government to take care of me. I don't have the ability to provide enough utility to the world to take care of myself." So I need the government to take care of me. Nobody's saying that to me. They're always talking about somebody else, right? Right. Uh, this person says, a horseman book says, it's not a Fordora, it's a Trilby. Is that true? I don't, I don't yeah, know. he's probably right. Probably you're right. Yeah. And not everyone has the same maturity and growth curve, so how do we really decide? Oh, just vote for me. We've already decided. Close discussion. Okay, people who write the bills on banks have to fear the Roman emperors. Why would they fear the Roman emperors? Because they rise from the dead every time a congressman signs a bill on the banks. Yeah, but what's the grounds for the decision? The biggest poop. Other than that, it's safe. Good. That's a trilby, Eric. Fedoras have much larger brims. Okay, good to know. Good to know. This my small bram tat is a trilby. I always wanted to wear a trilby. I didn't even know it existed until right now. Progressives are the any group. I mean, am I progressive? I don't. I, I wouldn't self-identify as such. Well, he wants he wants you to be a progressive because that way he can uh, believe what you're saying to be the truth, sort of. I mean, the thing is, it's best the the best truth is to stop worrying about who's in what group, and let's deal with the shit one issue at a time, one one reality of politics at a time. Like he, like he's listening to you, and he's like, "Well, I like this, but is it progressive?" <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's all things to all people. The whole thing about cultural appropriation is really silly. I mean, Angantir, just wait until you have your culture appropriated, like I've had my culture appropriated. I am a Native American Indian, and white people nowadays are walking around with teepees and bows and arrows and headdresses, and it's like, hey. That's my people. We invented the tank top. And we don't want you to steal it from us. People are more mature at 50 compared to 19, so maybe that should be the age. No. No, these are just, this is just my raw, muscular bod. This is all bod right here. B-O-D. Bod. Uh, America was built on appropriation. Appropriation? <laughs> so what was appropriated to what purpose? Who was appropriating what from whom to accomplish what goal? Yes, I am jacked. Oh, yeah. Muscles. Pow! Fist. Pow! Muscle. Fist! You see what I'm saying? Ben Crosby wore a trilby. Humphrey Bogart wore a fedora. Host Eric wore a tank top. It was own making. Host Eric wore suspenders. Yeah. With his banana hammock. Yeah. I did. I do. I will. I won't. All day, every day, motherfuckers. I'm Irish Scottish, and people can wear a kilt and eat haggis all they want. It's a. Uh, Tradition in Scotland to eat haggis off my junk. We appropriated the 13 colonies from King George III. We didn't appropriate them. We were them. We just excommunicated our erstwhile ruler. You know, who else were the 13 colonies? Right? It was the people in 13 colonies. It wasn't King George. He wasn't hanging out in 13 colonies. Polishing his musket, shooting the Indians. We had to shoot those Indians ourselves, okay? You think those Indians just died on their own? <laughs> yeah, you know? 
Yeah, I was like, we had to clear that. We had to clear all that area out. We had. We did the work. All right. We earned that shit. We did the work. Okay. Well, before we first got here, the whole place was fucking infested with Indians. I'm serious. So you know, King George didn't come get rid of them all. King George didn't infest those blankets with smallpox. That was all us. <laughs> I might have cigarettes. Let me smoke one again. Right. I mean, what people got to realize here is the the number one rule of the jungle, right? Might makes right. Great. Survival of the fittest. Uh, I mean. Survival of the fittest. Why do you think the Indians aren't around anymore? There you go. They weren't fit. They weren't fit enough. They weren't fit enough. We, we were fitter. They were fitter. <laughs> we went to the gym. They sat at home. They were fat. Yeah, they didn't even lift. They just gorged themselves on maize all day. Yeah. What did we do? We came in, we got those boats, we were flea infested, we had syphilis, we just fucked these Indians, we killed the fuck out of them. Yeah. So, you know, that's called doing it right. <laughs> Fucking. Yeah, I mean. Maize they, gluttons. They weren't as powerful, right? Well, they were maize gluttons. They just didn't have. Didn't have the might. They didn't have, of course, they didn't have as good of weapons. They had bow and arrow. They had bow and arrow. Come on, bow and arrow. Like that's gonna do. I didn't think they had horses until we brought them over, did they? I think they were riding around like goats before we brought over no, horses. I'm pretty sure there were wild horses here. <laughs> so they called them. They were goats, mountain goats. More equine looking than most, but still goats. <sighs> SJW were very likely to be ENFJ and ENFP. Isn't that the whole point of FE in those two? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think SJW is likely to be ENFJ necessarily. I'd say ENFP. Yeah, I'd say maybe maybe ISFPs, but it seems like it's mostly an NFP thing. It's that combination of FI and NE that makes you just have those flights of fancy. You know, I think you it's know. Your, I have been in my transracial journey, proto New Zealander. So uh, don't say that. New Zealanders killed all the pygmy proto New Zealanders when you first arrived. And you buried the the news of it so thoroughly that nobody even remembers. But I was there. I remember. Where are you from, Hambone? If you don't mind my asking, it's from the center of the hand. All the juicy ham is wrapped around him. ISFPs and ethics classes are a nightmare I wish I never knew. I believe that. I believe that to be true. That's not nice, though. I personally and individually care about the history of the Constitution in a sexual manner. Or previous, you and I have something in common. Me too. Which amendment do you think is the hottest? I like the one about quartering soldiers. It always turns me on. Every night before I go to bed, I check all the rooms of the house, make sure I haven't been forced to quarter any soldiers when I wasn't looking. It's gotta, you gotta, if you don't exercise your constitutional right to not have soldiers quartered at your house, I mean, you might as well not have it. So that's why, if you've heard, you've probably heard since you've been here, Spacey, every night as I walk around the house and I say, hey, no soldiers. <laughs> you know what? There was this one time <laughs> where a soldier needed to stay at my house, and I told him just let him do it because I just wanted to be a nice guy, you know? I was like, yeah, sure, you can sleep on the couch. But right? is it like a friend of yours or something? No. Oh. You know, you know? And I didn't even think about the fact that I could have just said, no, fuck off. You could have, you know, even if it's just a friend of yours that happened to be a soldier? You should never let them stay at right. your house because you have, you have to, to exercise the right, right or else you you're going to lose it. It'll atrophy. Right. And, it will just yeah. drop off. Ooh, sorry, you're a soldier. You can't stay in my house. <laughs> you got to understand. I, I just, I, <laughs> I kind of exercise my rights here. My rights right. not have soldiers forced to be stayed in my house. But I'm not trying to force you. Uh, <laughs> better not take any chances. <laughs> Let's see. The Maori fought back. We swapped guns, food, tobacco for land. Oh, I mean, you didn't kill your natives? 
He, you get a lot of this guy. You get a lot of Captain New Zealand. Well, they Zealand. Really completely killed off all their natives. Oh, Captain New Zealand killed natives. Uh, do you not know how to be an imperialist power? Come on. You got to go in there and kill those natives. Now, I agree, don't make them extinct. Got to keep a few around to romanticize after you've killed most of them. Make them rare. Give them casinos. I'm not a fan of terms like SJW, feminazi, being critical of the validity of someone's ideas is great, but it isn't accurate to liken them to Nazis. Well, the only reason they're called feminazis is because they were the ones who started likening people to Nazis in the first place. So it's like a counter. It's like a counter term. I call them anti-feminists. Because they make women look terrible. Um... But now they're all mixed and they never were one people. The Maoris. They mixed with the New Zealanders. You guys are all half breeds, half Maoris, half New Zealand. Where did New Zealand come from anyway? England or someplace else? Like Australia came from England, right? So where did New Zealand come from? <sighs> Bye, Sweaty Chandran. See you later. Don't forget your lunch. Don't leave it at home in the fridge. You'll, for, you'll regret it. She might have been INFP, but she didn't talk much outbursts of feelings stuff. I'm like, moisture, dampness. I care about my inaccurates. <laughs> what premium is on a roll today? Yeah, he is. Third and final tidal wave of damp, moist feminism. Oh, we're not... Third wave is over. Fourth wave is over. We're now in post-feminism. They're, they're not. There's no waves anymore. Yeah, it's not just vaginas all over your face all day long. Intersectional post-feminism. There you go. Yeah. Post-feminism. I'm post-post-feminism. Back to regular feminism again. That means all the women have to go back in the kitchen. So we start over. What type is the most annoying FI? I want to say ISTJs, but I'm biased. Most annoying FI. Hmm. Yeah, I guess. I guess I agree with. Yeah, actually, you know what? He has a piece. I, it's hard to say. No, no type in particular is more annoying than others. Everybody's equal and good and wonderful and true. And he has a piece. And probably ESFPs. <laughs> ESFPs as FI is like. It's more than annoying. It causes actual damage sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. It's like a wrecking ball yeah. of, of naughtiness. <laughs> New Zealand came from England too. Okay, that's probably why you talk kind of like Australians a little bit. ICGs don't care about things like that. They have their own thing going on. ISFPs are more self righteous You just don't want to get into an FI fight with an ISFP. You just go ahead and just back down right away. There's no point. It's like if if they got their FI stuck onto something and you're disagreeing with them, they're not going to budge. Women and ESFPs only have one right, the kitchen counter right. Oh, Ruse Moose, that's not true. Women are people too, just like you and me. Except they're softer and they've got boobs. And they smell good. Yeah, it's the main difference is really. I got a vagina too, I guess. It's also a difference. The ESFPs will actually physically hurt you if you wound their FI. I, I'm not gonna fully disagree with that. No, they definitely will. They're, uh, they're what you might call vigilant in defense of their authenticity. <laughs> Your authenticity seems awfully hostile to me. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure that your authenticity it seems like you're just pissed off? Yeah. <laughs> I think you're just taking out your anger on me. Well, I think that's going to call it a night. 
Good night, sweetheart. It's time to go. Banana. -na -na -na. We'll see you and your moisture in court. Suzanne Bank. It's a good way to end the stream.